video in the series for Microsoft Project and uh, this will pretty much cover all the topics uh, that we need to cover. I'll do one more small video after this which will talk about master projects which is how do you work with creating one project, big project that has multiple projects attached to it. So I'll do a quick one for that. In this video I want to talk about some advanced formatting features uh, and um, also where you can have calculations and if functions and I'll just share a little bit so you get an idea as to what that is. Uh, first I want to talk about formatting the Gantt chart. So you can click right click here, you can go to grid lines and you can show the grid lines to come up in different colors so whatever you wanted it to be you can choose that the current date you can choose that you know I want the current date in red or something and if I scroll across I'll see the current date in red if I'm able to come across here somewhere so there it is so those things are nice and you can customize anything in grid lines you can even go to format grid lines you can even right click here go to bar styles and I had shown you earlier in one of the videos where you could change things like the milestones instead of it being black in color you can make it some other color click OK and there's the milestones change there and the other thing you can do is I'm just going to click here in the corner to highlight everything and I go to format and bar and there's an option called bar text so there's the bar shape now for some reason this feature doesn't come up and you right click and go to that and there's a bar text and I can choose on the left hand side of the bar I can say add the cost click OK now we see it adds the cost for each and every task on the left hand side so you can add when you go to format bar you can choose to have something in the top right bottom inside whatever you would like it to be and that will be added just you know I have to highlight everything because otherwise it only applies to that one particular line rather than everything you can even right click and go to layout and you can choose to have the layouts in different styles and there are different formats that you can look at it's just making it easy for you to see and you can use the zooms to increase and reduce the zoom which is orange and you can always click on a line and then say scroll to task and I can reduce the zoom so these are some nice features to add uh, interesting elements um, to your project to make it look better. You can also change the font colors here. So if you want, you can go to Format. Instead of Font, go to Text Styles. And here you can choose, say for example, I can say um, all my summary tasks, I want it to be in a certain color. And fonts and whatever you want to do click OK and you see right away you'll be able to change things with one click rather than going to each and every one of them so milestones, summary tasks and you can make multiple changes format there's also the bar styles which you'll get when you right click on the Gantt chart and you can have many things done there too now we can talk about some customization option in relation to first calendars because say for example you had some people who were um, having different times of work so you can create special calendars for them and you can assign to them in the resources sheet so to do that you can go to under tools change working time and then you click on create new calendar and it's going to make a copy of the standard calendar which we've been using but I'll just give it my name and I click OK. So now you see I can choose the calendar I want to edit. So I can click on Amir calendar or whatever I want to call and go to work week details and I can set the Saturday time for it and set some hours I'll say on Saturday 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'll be working. I can click OK and I click OK. Now I can go to view resource sheet and there is the calendar here 
and I can change that base calendar to Amir's calendar. So this way, project will know that I've got some special hours that I'm available to work at, rather than everybody else being the same. So that's a nice feature. Now the same way, everything in project can be customized. So if I come back to Gantt chart, I can customize the Gantt chart to way I wanted it. So when you go to view and you can go to more views, in here you'll see there's a Gantt chart and there are lots of detailed Gantt if I want. And I can copy it instead of editing it. I would rather copy it and I can call it a mere detail Gantt. You can want to give it a better name. And then you can start making changes to this as to what do you want it to be in here. So I can say cost. Do you want to group something together? Do you want to filter by something? And then you can click OK. Now that is there and I can hit apply. So now I have that view. View Gantt chart. Now I'm back to Gantt chart. So it's good that you can customize it. It's better to give it your own name rather than trying to just keep changing the existing ones. Now the next thing I want to show you is that you can create custom field in which you can do different things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a custom field where you can have a drop down button for something. So you could get to custom field by right clicking here and then going to customize fields and you get this window or you can go to I think it's under tools and customize and then you can say customize fields. So the first time I want to in the task I want to text and there is a text one there and I want to do a lookup. So you can create a lookup so say I wanted to for whatever reason I wanted a lookup of cities. And then you can also put description here. I can even set something as a default. Click close. And I can even rename this to something. I click OK. And I click OK. Now I'll just right click here and I'll insert the column and I'll look for it was text. There it is, text one city. So you can just start typing the word T E X T and it will start to show up. And I can click OK. And you see there is a drop down button that I can choose things from. I can right click and I can hide it. Now I'll go to view resource sheet and I'll do one up here for a cost. Say for example I wanted to figure out that okay I need to pay 13 percent tax on my cost for example on all my cost. So I can create a new field for that. So I can go to tools, customize, fields and this time I need something with cost. So it automatically goes to resource and cost one I will do a formula and I want to do cost multiply by 13% uh, tax. So I can do 1.13, which will give me the total cost plus the tax. So I can click here, cost, and there's cost. And you see, there's a whole bunch of things you can do uh, date, duration, and so there's a lot of things you can start looking into if you wanted to when you wanted to add things. Cost multiply by 1.13. And I can click OK. And before I click OK, just to give you an idea, you see there are all these buttons that you may have seen in Excel. And also functions. There's the if functions. Null expressions. So there's a whole lot of things you can do here. Click OK. It's asking me, are you sure? It's going to overwrite everything. I say click OK. And you can rename it too. I'll just leave it as cost one. I click OK. Now I'll right click here, insert a column, type cost and cost one click OK and you see it adds the totals plus the taxes of the cost whatever the cost is uh, and it's adding it here 
So if you wanted, you could even add the cost table here. Okay, I'll come back to view Gantt chart, and um, I'm just going to do some completion. So I'll make this 50% complete. Uh, but I think I'm going to have to change the date. So I'm just going to go to project, project information, and I'll change the project start date back to the fourth. Okay, so now I can select 100%. 100%, 75, 50, and 25. Okay, so I'm just setting things up and I can go to view and tracking Gantt so I can see the percentages on mine. Okay, now I want to do a custom field where I'll get a graphical indication of which tasks are at 100% and things, just to show you the customization options. So I can right click, go to customize fields, and this time I need to do a number type. And I'm going to do a formula, and in the formula I'm going to put uh, percentage complete. So that is under number percent complete. That is what percentage of the job is complete. I click OK. Click OK. And on the bottom I'm going to go to graphical indicators. Now I can start setting things here like if it is less than 25 I would like to put a image here, a red one. If it is less than 50 I want to put a yellow. If it is less than 75, I want it to be, say, this color. If it is less than or equal to, just to make it shorter, I could do one extra one off. Make it, and there is a whole bunch of things here, so whatever you felt like you can use. So I'll use a flag. And I'll just say click on summary rows and choose the summary row option. And I think I lost some of my stuff. And non summary rows too. And I'll click OK. Let's see if this worked. I might have to go back and fix it. Click OK. And I'll right click here insert a column and number one that's why it's good to rename them and you see there it is the flags are showing up so just to give an indication how this can be very useful okay. there is also one more thing you can add to insert columns you can look for something called WBS click OK it's just a numbering system 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.12 1 so just list it like that and you can even change the numbering to your liking by going to I think it's under project and then WBS and you can define it to what you want it to be you can set it up to be uppercase ordered letters now it's gone to A1, A2, A3 project WBS define code and you can rename and you can even use your own codes like whatever numbering system you wanted to use you could use that so that's just an option if you ever needed to use it now all these things that we created the custom calendars the custom fields you can actually import it to your template so that it is available to you in all your files so to do this you can go to tools and you can go to this organizer option or you can go to view more views and then click on organizer and whichever things you wanted you could just click on say this Amir detail Gantt this is the global which is the global template and this is this file that I'm working on I can hit copy and it will be added to the global 
And the same way, if you start looking in here, you'll find fields. And there are the fields. I can click on it and I can copy this way. Same thing with calendar. I've got a mere calendar. I can copy. So you see, as soon as I click on them, when I click here, it's going this way. When I click here, it's going the other way. Same thing in reports. If you had some special reports, you can click it and copy across towards your site. So this is a good feature so that you don't have to keep on recreating these things. I'm just going to close that. Now the last thing for this uh, video, we'll talk about macros just a little bit. Um, some of you may know from Excel and Access. Macros allow you to do multiple things in such a way that it will remember it for you so you don't have to keep doing the same task over and over again. So let's do that. So when you go to Tools, there is an option called Macro and we need to record a new macro. And you can give it a name. Always something nice so that you know what it is. I will just leave it as Macro 1. You can give it a shortcut key, like say L, Control plus L, so you don't have to go looking for the macro. You just press the Control and L. You just have to be careful that that shortcut is not used for something. Like you cannot use Control C because C is used for copy. And it says it was stored in the global file. Or if you just want it in this project, you can set it in this project. You can even leave a description here. It's always good for other people who come after you are using it. This would be a good thing. And then you just click OK. Now I can start recording it. So I can do right click here and I can say let's change the grid lines. And I'm going to change the bar rows to red. Uh, I can right click. I want non working time to be in sort of silver. Let's show it in yellow. So you see the non working time. It's become yellow. Right click. Non working time. Layout. I'll say, okay, let's change the layout to this layout. I want to increase the zoom. Um, I'll, I'll click here. I'll go to Format, Font, and I'll make the size 12 and also change the font. And I also want to make the colors on all of them some other color. Click OK. okay. Now you go to, I'll just click here, go to Tools, Macro, and I can stop the macro. And you might remember from Excel the pound sign means that the information is not fitting in there. So just extend it. So now if you had to run the macro, you just go to Tools, Macro, click on the word macro itself and then you can click on macro 1 and then run it. And just to test out this, I've just got another file open and I went back to view tracking Gantt because every changes I made I was in the tracking Gantt so it may act up. So I'll just click here and I'll hit the shortcut control L and you see now everything changed. Now if I had recorded it in this part extending the column it would have done this for me too. So this is really good for all repeat type of tasks so that you don't have to keep doing it for every project that you work on. I just wanted to just mention one more thing that when you go to the file and print preview, to print you'll have to hit the print button. I was talking about it in the previous video and I forgot to talk about this part. Also the same thing when you go to report, report, and you click on one you need to hit the print button. So I think I've covered all the topics that I need to cover in terms of Microsoft Project. One more video coming up. Thank you for watching.